discussion. Why is there something wrong with nothing? My point would be this, is that atheism offers no answers to that question. You know, I'm glad that Will interrupted me because I think he was right about what he said. I wasn't really answering to the question. I thought of a different example. Um, let me, uh, this is going to be a little experiment I'm going to do here. Um, let me ask you guys, does a pink flying elephant exist? What, in your mind or something? Now it exists because you imagined it. Okay. But the existence of the pink flying animal in your mind is obviously not the same quantification and qualification of existence as a real, tangible, physical world pink flying elephant. Okay. Yeah. It still exists in here, in your imagination, okay. but it's not the same. It's perceived in a different way. Exactly. I think that's the, that's the focus we need to take. We might be the product of the imagination of a being infinitely more powerful than us. Okay. And if we are that product of, product of imagination, then you are right. And we truly are completely and utterly powerless in the face of Allah, or God, or... That's all I need to get from you, man. Right? <laughs> That's all I need to say. No, I'm joking. Go into the probability of... But no, the, the point I'm... Exactly. Do, 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 do you know... What I said being true. Yeah, forget about probability for now. Because we're trying to work on foundations, because you want to build... You can't build castles on thin air, right? So when we have this idea of, okay, there's something rather than nothing. And now we question, why is there something rather than nothing? Now, we got to ask ourselves, of the systems that are out there, philosophical, religious or otherwise, what is incapable of answering this question? It's, it's impossible for an atheist to have any tools to answer this question. Because atheists... For anybody to answer this question. No, no, no. I would say that atheism has nothing to offer. It has no explanatory power. Pantheism has something, polytheism has something, monotheism has everything else, but that atheism has no explanatory power whatsoever so you, at this point. You think you need the metaphor? That's why I'm not an atheist. Answer that <laughs> See, this is how we slowly get them out of. Uh... Yeah, do you believe you have to have. Uh, some uh, you gotta get button? the gacha You believe you have to have a metaphysical no. basis to address the question? You yeah. can't answer the question without metaphysics. You can only answer it with. with yeah. I think that foundationally, it's an, it's an intuitive metaphysics, so yeah. In that sense. Remember we said that... But you said humans have an intrinsic... Yeah, that's the metaphysics. I think that's a belief, is that, you know, that's... Yeah, but well, well, it's, it's not something physical, is it? Because if metaphysics is that which is not physical... What did you say about... Do you, do you believe you have an innate uh, disposition to believing in God? Do you think you something know, in you? that is a very interesting thing that we could talk about, and I actually changed my mind about that. <laughs> Nowadays, um, most people who live uh, have some kind of faith, some kind of belief. Maybe in a god, maybe in an entity, maybe in energy. Some people just believe yeah. in energy. But in a higher source, in a higher yeah, power. Exactly, right? yeah. exactly. Most people, the vast majority of people, have some kind of belief. And um, um, why is that? Why is it that the vast majority of people come to that conclusion? Well, because the people who chose a purpose for them, who chose to believe in something, are the ones who were more competitive in the game of life previously. They are the ones whose genes were passed on and whose similarities were passed on to their children and thus it has been accumulated with generations and generations and generations that people have this, uh, uh, most, most of the people have this idea that something must exist beyond me. You know what I mean? It's, uh, it's every civilization in history. There is no example exactly. of a prehistoric or exactly. historic... Uh, so it seems like an there's no atheist right? civilization yeah. in history. Yeah, that's, a, yeah, that's, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. You would look at it as an outgrowth of the analytical capacity of the human mind. Some people because do. We look, we look for actors within the world. Yeah. We see someone doing something, we infer a motivation. We see something in the natural world. Yeah. We naturally want to infer a conscious motivation. Agency, yeah. When, yeah, agency, exactly. So that that is a, more or less an explanation for the outgrowth of a, a spiritual tradition. Yeah. I would say. One of the explanations. Yeah. That's an explanation. Yeah, yeah. For example. So what I wanted to something. find out from you is if you're saying if there is a something instead of nothingness. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry, the, the brother here was just uh, asking me a question. I can't see Yeah. You mentioned that there was a something. Yeah. And that something. Is there a time where that something will cease to exist or will that something exist forever? So, my, my understanding is that if there's something rather than nothing, for that something to have to be in existence, it must depend on something that is always in existence. Always in existence. Yeah, because 
if it isn't, then what, what is, what, how do we explain its existence? Maybe we can't. No, no, and this goes back to the question of, and this is why I like the dependency argument for the God's existence, right? Yeah. I say something has got to be necessary in his existence, something which has no... Argument for again. contingency. Pardon? Argument for contingency. Yes. So why, I, I, why, we assume, why do we assume that? Because if you, have, you can't have an infinite regress of dependent things. But this is a philosophical point again. No, no, you can. You can have an infinite regress. The, the, only, the, the point, I mean, mathematically speaking, is a bit, is a bit, is a bit tough. But I think the point is very simple. The, our mind requires something to be eternal. Whether it's the universe itself or God. The Big Bang theory seems to suggest that the universe is a contingent thing, but it doesn't prove that the universe is a contingent thing. So I think the, the Big Bang theory suggests the universe is a contingent and I thought it may suggest that there might be something that causes existence. So now, whether it is God or the spaghetti monster, the point is that whatever you call it, friend, God, or the point is that it has certain characteristics which are is timeless, spaceless, and probably it has the power to cause something. And that's the traditional view of it. Yeah, exactly. So, but the whole thing with the spaghetti monster, the problem with it is yeah, that it's I mean, not power, it's not yeah, timeless. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's space. a man, I mean, of course, it's an yeah. object, yeah. So, yeah. it's not like something like consciousness or whatever. It's yeah, not, so it's not that's what I'm saying. The, 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 the thesis that there's something which is a necessary existence yeah. is a very compelling thesis. Now, I think it's a good argument. Yeah, but the thing is that the nature of it can't be really. Uh, we can't really um, speculate on the nature of it. Like you said, necessity, eternality, um, oneness, and the fact that it's not made out of parts or dependent parts, you can go that far, but you can't say that well, it's loving, it's merciful. But to, 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 make, it, to make it even simple, uh, I don't know if you know William Drake, yeah, yeah. He, put it, he put it like very simple because he said, uh, suppose that you've got an explanation for something, yeah, which makes sense. Like, for example, say, you find like the machines on the back side of the moon and you say oh there must be intelligence here yeah, yeah. and if you don't know where this intelligence comes from or you know how it, it looks like what it looks like it doesn't mean that you need to reject the explanation so the explanation is still, is still good even yeah. if you don't know exactly where yeah. this exactly. intelligence comes from or exactly exactly how, what it looks like yeah, yeah. Um, because by doing so you kind of you don't have explanation what's happening right? yeah, yeah. Agreed. yeah yeah so, no, no. Um, so yeah I think it's a very good argument yeah. I think AP is uh, struggling with it here yeah I think they would yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm still trying to understand from a human mind the way we create stories we have a beginning a middle and an end but what you're saying that beginning has always been infinite has always been there so we can't actually trace when it started that's what you're saying well, so we need we need something which has no beginning so it has no beginning and it has no end yeah and we as humans we're just simply passing through from that existence. yeah so we're we're explicable or we're the preponderance of the universe Universe is explained through this necessary eternal agency okay. that everything that's dependent is de is ultimately dependent on something which is independent it's as simple as that and then all of this though comes back to just belief no, it th that's actually something which is quite rational so this is remember we talked about different fields of knowledge this is more deduction now all right yeah so this is something we're rationalizing okay there's a little yeah. problem in yeah. this yeah. ideology yeah. So we are denying the infinite regression, instead choosing that, okay, there is a beginning cause, right, which you call God. But the, before you continue, I think there is, you mentioned causation. Causation is not always required for dependency. Which way? So you can, you can have something which depends on something else and which is not caused by it. Ah, Let me give an example, right? So for example, I can build a house. So I'm the cause for a house being built, yeah? But I die. And the house continues living, right? So the house is not dependent on me, but it's caused by me. You see that point? Yeah. So the person who built this building behind us, or the people, 
they caused it to exist. Or maybe the, 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 the horse head did embed them in the embedded Yeah, they caused it to exist. But that horse head no longer depends on. Yeah, but for the there people. to be more houses, there need to be more people building them. Accepted. But so what I'm saying is causation, which is defined as something which brings rise to phenomena, is different to dependency, which means something relying on something else. So for, for the house doesn't require those people that built it to, to rely on it. So when we say that everything dependent depends upon something else which is dependent, then you need to have something independent to allow all dependent things to exist. Mm. And not, not necessarily every cause has a, every effect has a cause, although that can be made. The same argument can be made. Not necessarily in every conjunction. has a cause. Yeah, because you can say, look, you can, you can say, for the sake of argument, I'm going to have an infinite regress of causes. And I, like you said, it's conceivable. It's not, yeah, it's conceivable, yeah. uh, it's, it, even though it's, it's, I would say it's, it's pretty difficult to conceive. Yeah, it's, it's out of the field, but it can be. I it's, it's almost, I, I, I would say, it. I, I would say it's, uh, it's, for me it's illogical, situation. but I can understand why someone would say that it's a timeless, it's a multiverse backwards, yeah? I can't understand why. But then the question would be, what does that multiverse depend on? I got wrong, man, but nice to meet you anyway. You too, man. Yeah, yeah. I'll see you so that's so what, the problem of the but, the, but, but there's one thing I want to say, like that's, from our like from our theological Islamic perspective, well, if you look at the basic definition of God, it's literally that it's a, it's a قل هو الله أحد he's one and only Allah Samad the thing that everything depends upon and he depends upon nothing the independent one basically that is eternal لا ميلد ولا ميلد that there's no he doesn't give birth nor is he to give birth you know so ولا ميكل الله there's nothing like him ولا ميكل الله كفر أحد there's nothing like him so He's the necessary existence. So what we would say is that William Lane Craig, you mentioned him, he would take it that far, he would agree with these points, but then he would say God is three in one and one in three, which is Trinity God. We would say that's problematic. So that's why we would say, look. I think it doesn't really matter. Yeah, Trinity does. I mean, I mean, I mean, I think, I think the problem with religions, I mean, the problem. I mean, they can be right, all of them. I mean, all of them. So one of them can be right. But I think that. Oh, yeah. One of them can. One of one of them can be right. But I think that all of them they try to use God arguments, like which you know, some philosophical arguments that are really good, and they try to track them back. Uh, to their religion, and I think it's not it's not very fair because there's no direct connection between Islam uh, and the God uh, the God hypothesis. There's no direct connection between uh, uh, the Christians and the God uh, hypothesis. So I think that the God hypothesis is something needs to be taken separately, and then you can move to. I think uh, I actually agree. And then, and then I agree you with you. Move to religion. Yeah, I agree with you. But I think I think that. I think there is very good evidence uh, for God. Yeah. I'm quite sure. Sorry, what uh, evidence is that? Wait, wait, wait. Let's, let's, what we were just discussing. We go, this yeah. is a completely different uh, ramification really of the conversation. Yeah. But but we we need to know this. Yeah. But before before you do it, let me just uh, clarify what I was saying. Yeah. Yeah. The same way that you use God to get out of the infinite regression paradox, God also is an infinite regression by Himself because God is infinite. And no matter how. But it wouldn't be a regression because it wouldn't go back. Uh, it just stays well, back. Not it's God is infinite. It's just, uh, there are many parts of infinity that contradict each other. If God is infinite, in but wisdom, we, we wouldn't say that. We wouldn't say that is infinite. Power, say that they is contradict eternal. each other. The thing is, we haven't got to that stage yet, as we said, right? Yeah. He's right. The point that he made was is interesting. Let me just quickly mention it. So he said that you're right. I would agree with you that you can't really say, okay, well, this is the God of, like I just said, right? This is the God of Quran, whatever. And therefore, you have to be Muslim. That's, that, that would be a ridiculous argument. But what we can do is we can say anything that does not fit these parameters that we've just talked about would be problematic because it's, it's illogical. So, for example, if I said oh, if God is a man, sorry to say, yeah? So, well, if you say God is a man, that denies his in the, the eternity, the necessity, the, the so on and so forth. So we might not be able to. But we might. So what, what I'm saying is that we might not be able to prove religion necessarily in that sense. But we can dismiss religion. So we can say, look, this religion that says a chicken is God or a goat is God or a human being is God is a false religion because it says that okay, something which is going to be unlimited is limited at the same time, which is a contradiction. 
if so, he I, has I, unlimited yeah. power, yeah. he has the power to limit his power, yeah. to limit um, himself, yeah. then, or even to destroy I don't, himself. I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't see any contradiction there. No, but hold on, yeah. but then can I just come back on that? Yeah. If God limits his power, of this necessary existence limits yeah. his power yeah. to being not uh, to being limited, then it stops being the necessary existence. Well, he still has the possibility of coming back. No, but then, then it would stop being God, right? Like Jesus. No, but here's the thing. How, how would the, the question would be, what would be the explanation for the universe in that stage?